is drawing near. Salvation is drawing near. Hello, my dear brothers and sisters. We begin the holy season of Advent today. With this Mass, we begin this beautiful time of the year. So let's begin the celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Now we shall have the blessing of the Advent wreath and lighting of the candle. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's now ask our loving Father to forgive us as we enter into this beautiful season of Advent and as we begin the celebration of the Eucharist. May His grace, His love, His forgiveness fill our lives and may this season be a time for us to draw closer to God. May God forgive us our sins as we repent over our sins now. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, to have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would tend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways? Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in 
any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, happy Advent to all of you. We begin this joyful season of Advent today very different from all other Advents that we have ever had in our life. At least as far as I can remember, this is the first time in my life that I'm beginning this season that I love and cherish the most. This is my favorite time of the year. Advent time, Christmas time is the most joyful and the most favorite time for me. But this year it is different. I, when I would love to celebrate this Mass with the church full, with all of you, just feeling the joy of this season, I realize it's, it's not happening. Church is empty. You're all staying home and watching Mass from home, or some of you come to the parking lot and celebrate Mass. So life has changed drastically. And the first reading that we have today as we begin this season kind of reminds us of a, a similar time that people were experiencing. You see, there is, there is a longing for God and people were feeling that God was not very close to them or rather, they were not very close to God. So that that creates a longing in them. And the reading clearly tells that, Lord, you are our Father, but we feel we are so far from you, or some of us might feel that God is so far from us. We want to go back to that wonderful time when we felt that you were so much in our lives that we were so close to you. So come back, God. Let's go back to that wonderful time again. This is too much for us to handle. This is too much for us to be away from you. It's too much for you to be not so close to us. 
So people are expressing a longing for God. Actually, the season of Advent is a season when we once again begin to feel our need for God, our longing for God, and express that longing to have God in our lives. And with that longing, we look forward to His coming. Because we know Advent reminds us of God's coming into the world, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ as our Messiah, as our Savior, into the world and into our lives. So this season reminds us of that. But as we begin this season, this year, it especially reminds us of what we are feeling. What as, as a community, as individuals, we have been going through. There is, there is that desperate need for God. There is a desperate need to go back to those good times again when we felt safe, when we felt so loved, when we felt so close to God. So there is that desperate longing. I feel it, and I'm pretty sure you feel it as well. But then the first week of Advent is the week of hope. We are all feeling that desperation, that frustration, and that longing for God. But let's remember, this week is a week of hope. That means not everything is lost. Good times will come back. God is not absent from our lives. God is very much there. Season of Advent is again a powerful reminder for us that God is there. God is interested in us. God cares about us. God doesn't want to be, you know, away or separated from us. God wants to be very much in our lives. So if you've been feeling like the Israelites in the first reading, where they feel God was away or they had drifted away from God's ways and feeling the desperate need to be reconnected with God, to have that closeness, to have that intimate, closer relationship with God, this is the best time to come back to God. And this is the best time when we are reminded, my brothers and sisters, God has never abandoned us Though people felt that they drifted away from God, God never leaves us. God comes into our midst through His Son, Jesus Christ. And the candle that we lift, the first candle we lit today, is the candle of hope. So I want to remind you all, my beloved parishioners, though we are celebrating this, as, this season of Advent differently, not gathered together as a community, but we have not been deprived of the hope that this season brings into our lives. Through this season, let us experience God more closely in our lives. And pay close attention to what Jesus tells in the gospel. Be watchful, be alert, for the Lord will come at an unexpected time. Let's be watchful always. Let's not be caught unprepared or unexpected. We are always waiting for our God with longing in our hearts because we need God and we feel that need for God in our hearts. So I pray for all of you as we begin this season of Advent. May this season bring about more hope, more joy, even in these challenging days because when we have God in our lives, there is always joy, there is always hope, there is always peace. And may we experience those beautiful gifts of the season uh, during this time. That's my prayer for you. And I hope and pray that even though you're staying at home or some of you coming to the parking lot, let's still celebrate this season with great joy and hope. God bless you all and happy Advent to you all. Amen.
Let's all profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prophet Isaiah reminds us that we often wander from the ways of the Lord. Let us return to the Lord now and bring to mind those who are most in need of our prayers and our support. That the church will ready itself to receive the Lord again and again during this holy season of Advent, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may Christ strengthen their conviction as servant leaders for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this Advent season, we will see the world at peace, ready to prepare the way for God's reign. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will experience healing and relief from pain, especially Alexa Kelter, Jane Van Auken, Shauna Gurin, and Eleanor Rudolph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, will rejoice as they enter the heavenly Jerusalem, especially Jesus Mack, Dina Nemes, and Salvador Zuniga. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of John Pascarello, Hector Hilarion Rangel, Rafael and Dora Suarez, Jerry and Barbara Reese, Mariano and Nelly Regala, Maria Esperanza Regala, Janice Graves, and for the intentions of Teresa Alzacqua and the parishioners of St. Killian, for whom we offer our weekend masses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our personal needs, those in our Book of Remembrance, and all the people for whom we promise to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We very specially lift up to our Lord all those who have been affected by coronavirus, all in hospitals or at homes, and their families. Also remember first responders, our doctors and nurses who are working round the clock trying to help these patients. Let's lift them all up to our Lord, ask the Lord to be close to them, to heal them, and help them in this time of suffering and pain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's lift up all our prayers to our Heavenly Father through the intercessions of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the price of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without the end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, 
the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Kevin our Bishop, Timothy and Thomas his assistant bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Killian, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For kingdom, the kingdom, the, the power, power, and the glory are yours now. now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my, my soul, soul shall be healed.
Let's now pray the act of spiritual communion and welcome our dear Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts and souls spiritually. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I decide to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Cast out all hatred. May we, his body, repair the reign of God. Your light will come, Jerusalem, for on you will dawn the glory of the Lord, and all nations will walk. In your light, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. We have something new and exciting coming up on next Saturday, that is December the 5th, we are going to have our Christmas tree lighting. So please come to our courtyard as we turn on the lights all over our church property and our new tall Christmas tree. We'll have a DJ playing music, a unique dessert vendor making specialty s'mores, an espresso bar, and surprise guests to make it a fun event. Please join us and don't forget to wear your masks. During Advent, we'll be adding to our confession times. 
still on Saturdays after the morning mass, but starting this week, we'll also offer drive-through confessions on Wednesdays from 4 to 5 p.m. We also want to thank our deacon, Victor, for his love, support, and service to St. Killian community for the past couple of years. We wish him all the best at his new assignment at St. Joseph's Church in Placentia. And I want to thank you, all of you, my beloved parishioners, for your continued support to our church and for staying united in our spirit and prayer in these hard times. So, especially in season of Advent, I invite you to spend some more time in prayer, recognize our longing for God, and spend some time with God. And that brings about greater joy, peace, love, and hope in our lives. So, if you are staying home, you have more time at hand, make sure to spend some extra time in prayer during this holy season of Advent. And I encourage you to read the scripture with us every day, one chapter. We are reading the Gospel of Luke. So please do read your scripture, spend time with God. And that way, let's spend this Advent season more prayerfully, more fruitfully. And thank you to all our wonderful staff here at the church who make uh, you know, life easier for me in many ways and for all their generous service to our, our community. They are really a group of committed people who love, love you, who love this church. So do pray for all our staff. We are there for you and we are with you and praying for you every day. A very special thanks to our music team in a music ministry. I'm forgetting your name. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. There you go, Elizabeth. Elizabeth is important during Advent. You know that, right? The time... We will hear that story soon sometime. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Jeremiah and Beth for her reading and Susan and, and Barbara and of course our head sacrist and, and Disney. We are all a team. We work together with great joy because we love serving you. We love serving our God. Let's make this season of Advent truly a special time for all of us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace. God loves you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yeah.